Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Independent City Council. It's Tuesday, June 27th at 7.30 in the evening. Um, uh, thanks everybody for being here. Let the record show that counselors are all here. And thank you very much to staff for giving us the uh, iPad training. We're really excited about that because it'll give us an opportunity to, uh, to work electronically, saving some staff time and lots and lots of paper over the coming year when you have packets that are like this packet is only 65 pages. Um, it adds up after a while. So thank you very much. Um, Council members, you have uh, minutes from uh, June 13th uh, in your packet. Does it meet with your approval? Is that a motion? Okay, I have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Under public comment, anybody have a desire to rush to the microphone and make a public comment? I see no one rushing to the microphone, so we're going to continue uh, moving forward. Um, I think I get to do an oath of office, and I think I have somebody that's going to make some preparatory comments. Is that correct? Please. Good evening, and welcome to council. Good evening, Mayor, City Councilors. Um, I realize when I got here, I had an opportunity to meet all of you. So my name is Lyle Gilbert, and I'm a patrol sergeant with the City of Independence. Uh, Fifteen years ago, I actually started my career with the City of Independence as a reserve officer. Um, and tonight, I have the privilege of introducing our newest reserve officer, um, Larry Sykes. Let everybody come up here. Make him stand here and get uncomfortable when I talk about him. So, a few things about Larry. Uh, Larry grew up in Pendleton, Oregon. Um, been married to his wife, Tiffany, for 25 years. He has four children, ages 30, 23, 22, and 20. Um, you may, may recognize him. He's a local business owner. He owns Mamba's at Walmart. Um, he's owned and operated that business for the past eight years. I met Larry early last year when we were talking um, after doing a workout together, and um, he started talking about how he had applied actually with the Stockton Police Department in California back in like 1989. Um, turns out that he went through the testing and was on his way moving to Oregon when he got a call for an oral board interview, uh, which he didn't turn around and take. And pretty much that ended his um, pursuit of his law enforcement career, and he ended up having his own business. And, that's where he's today. So, in speaking to him, and having known him for a little while, um, he seemed like he'd be a good fit for the Independence Police Department as a reserve, and I explained our reserve program. Didn't seem really interested in the beginning, but a little while later I got a phone call from Larry asking for a meeting um, to discuss the reserve program further. One thing led to another, and Larry's hired to the reserve um, in October of last year. He attended the Mid Valley Reserve Training Academy, which requires attendance every Wednesday night and Thursday night, for up to four hours a night, plus almost every Saturday for six months. Um, he graduated, um, sorry, I lost my space here. It was in May. Graduated in May, um, did very well. Um, now he's been assigned um, as a field training officer with Independence, and hopefully within the next couple of days, he'll be in uniform all the time and I'll serve in the community of independence. Um, with that, Mayor, I'd like you to uh, you can take over and do your Okay. I enjoy this opportunity to swear you in. If you'll step forward here, raise your right hand. I, Sager, Larry Sykes, have been duly appointed by the Chief of Police. Have been duly appointed by the Chief of Police. Say an oath. Say an oath. That I will support the Constitution and the laws of the United States. That I will support the Constitution and the law of the United States. The state of Oregon. The state of Oregon. And the Charter and Ordinances of the City of Independence. The Charter and Ordinances of the City of Independence. And that I will perform the duties of the office of police officer. I will perform the duties of the office of police officer. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations and welcome. <laughs> Go ahead and have the whole, come on up, we'll do the picture thing. Family, come on up here. <laughs> Karen, I'm going to give you this so you can get the signatures. Officer, you, you have to sign too. Everybody gets to come up. Come on, this is a photo opportunity. This goes on the album. There you go. Everybody.
Okay, thanks everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Wow, Larry, just in time for Western days. <laughs> <laughs> One more body. <laughs> and we and, and let us not believe that that is by happenstance. Thank you very much. Uh, let's continue. We have a lot of stuff to do tonight, council members, so I'm going to kind of keep us moving promptly forward. Mr. City Manager, I think you have a report for us this evening. Um, Excuse me? Did I forget something here? Council Hazel? I have the City Manager report first. Oh, I'm sorry. On the agenda. Uh, you made the agenda for oh, me. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Do you want to reverse that? No, that's okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm cognizant that you said we were in a rush. Well, Not a rush, but you know. <laughs> Okay, we're through. Uh, let's see, Kathy, you're going to be talking about cost insurance during your report. Oh, I wasn't scheduled for a report, but I can do that. During the council phase, so maybe you can jump in. Share where we are. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, uh, just a couple things. Uh, the finance portal, the, the one of the things that we talked about in the strategic plan, uh, it should be launched this August. So that'll be an opportunity to find a show, look at, you know, basically a dashboard approach to how the city's finances are, you know, and, uh, and dive into as much detail pretty much as you want to. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm gonna be as surprised as you are, you know, come that time, but I, I'm getting nothing but global reports. A uh, reminder that uh, the, uh, and it's been, it seems early, but we need to sort of uh, remind you early, the League of Cities, their annual conference is coming up in September 28th, to 30th through the 30th at Portland, the Double Tree. We would like to get your interest and registrations in early because hotel rooms are always at a premium. There, they've changed their procedure this year, so we we think it'd be a little bit less of a mad scramble. But that said, we would care and would love to get your information as soon as possible if you are interested in attending. The mayor is already indicating his interest. Right, and I, I hope that uh, if you can at all attend, it is very, very helpful. Uh, mayors and city council members and people from all over the state, I think it's well worth it. Okay, uh, well, one, one announcement from the community engagement officer working with the school district. They have set up a week of coding for kids uh, for a kid class via United Way grant that we received, which will provide a one week course for Latino elementary school kids this summer, and they'll work together with the summer school kids from the school district. So that's, a, that's an opportunity, thanks to uh, Robiel's work in United Way and the school district, all three of them coming together for that program. Uh, quick update on Independence Landing in terms of construction. Uh, you can see that they've started doing some of the, uh, the flat work because the concrete work out there will you if you they are preparing Main Street here for sidewalks tomorrow we're all going to breathe a sigh of relief to see that finally get done there was a that took a little longer than we hoped it would so but that, that that work will get done should be finished tomorrow it's all prepped today uh, they'll have to come back and do a little bit of touch up one of the civic hours not been terribly helpful in some of the in some of their their pulls out of there so that'll be a later later date um, then that will just but then up until after the 4th and then come back and, and do some more work through July and into August and September for the wrap up of the project work. So, uh, but they're doing very good work. We're just wishing some things would go a little faster than we've said before. Um, I don't know if anybody else is reporting on this or not, but I know the Western Days Commission is going to, and is recommending a change to independent states on the uh, upcoming event this weekend. So I don't know if they're coming forward to you, we'll coordinate with them, but uh, uh, that's probably a change that requires some, uh, some work and stuff or something. Karen, what maybe everybody's looking at what, what kind of change? The I name from Western Days to Independence Day. Yes. But that won't be for this year, it'll be for next year. Correct. No, certainly not this year. No. A little late to get the You said there was a banner that made the they, introduction. They, they are. They're making a banner instead of mostly. Okay. So I, I I don't know if I jumped with the gun on somebody else's presentation. No, I I'm not. Okay. I did. I don't know a lot about it. I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. So fine. That's good. Okay. Uh, as you can see, we're spending some time. Little, I've been spending some time in uh, uh, making the transition for our new public works director. As you can see, the the outgoing public works director has already abandoned his seat. <laughs> <laughs> For all the world like a citizen but, you know, see what we can do about that <laughs> keep working anyway for a couple of days 
Uh, the old, <laughs> we've received a proposal to do some uh, architectural review of the old city hall in light of a proposal we have to look at it as a heritage museum. So we will get that work commissioned probably after the first. It's pretty reasonable. We'll get some, some get some pricing out and see if people are interested in pursuing that approach. So that that'll be coming. And then finally, uh, we are meeting uh, Lori and myself and, and Mike and a couple others will be meeting to look at the sewer financing uh, package that we're going to put together. That, that again is scheduled for this year. We 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 didn't get a grant that we were hoping for, but we think we have some other very attractive uh, resources available to us. So we're going to meet tomorrow, put that together, and then come back to you with a proposal for financing that project, as well as start to work soon on the uh, rate study to, to pay for to pay the bill. So that's coming. That's all I have for the evening, if you have uh, questions. The Council Dead grant for the landing park. I saw on the uh, I.O. or wherever you go that that was approved. Um, I don't have Sean here. It, it, was on, it was destined to be fully approved. And we think it will be fully approved. I think we are down to the sort of the courtesy steps, but I think the hard work of you know of the of grading the projects and ranking the projects, I think it's done. So I think it's a little bit pro forma at this point. I, I do want to add. I left, I left an item off the agenda. Uh, we've been working closely with Representative Paul Evans as well. The mayor has, Sean has, and we think there's a reason. He's worked very hard to try and get us some extra funds towards that project. Uh, I don't know if it'll succeed or not, but his work alone has been. You know, really, we're very gratified for the hard effort he's he's coming into it. For the park project. Yeah, the the from the river from park. So, Mary, you may know more about that you want to share. Our legislature is in its final days. Who knows what happens? Yeah, no promises. It's just that he's moving, he's working that hard on our behalf. It's really, uh, we're we're glad for that. Great. Please. One question, please. On the Independence Landing project, I I heard you say the sidewalks will be in. By the fourth, correct? These things are from here. We're, we're, the sidewalks are from Mechanical will wait until after the fourth. Okay. Um, and that is work that is being done on infrastructure, correct? Yes. Is Tokola also working on things at the same time, or are they waiting for the infrastructure to be done? They're, they're not waiting on the infrastructure. We're all waiting on the final approvals from the state on the, uh, uh, from the Bureau of Labor Industries. <coughs> On their, you know, their their pre-certification of the project. Once that done, that kicks off that kicks off their work. Okay. So Topol is on a totally separate path. Yeah. Their path has nothing to do with the infrastructure path. I, I, I know that. I just was wondering what the sequence <coughs> would be. Yeah. So again, just and so people know that the clock doesn't toll for Topol to begin its work until that that the certification has come back to us. So they they can't do anything other than spend money that they you know, that very uncertain environment before then. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to go to Council Liaison Reports. Uh, Councilor Linscott, do you have anything to report from the library board? Uh, we didn't have our meeting Monday because there was a special project going on. But um, we have the calendar and it's full of things to do every single day. And the um, summer reading signed up again on um, June the 9th. And every Saturday they have the Solar Saturdays celebrate the upcoming eclipse with a series of solar art activities for all age kids and kids to adults. And it's a grant from the um, Polk County Culture Coalition. And um, Good. lots of stuff. Go to the library. It's like that. Great. And since you're already to the school, do you have anything you'd like to add on Winnipeg? Um, yeah, Marshall is our um, president, and Steve, the mayor, is helping us with the um, policies and procedures. And um, because we, we're going to be pretty so proud by next month, we'll be a 501c organization. And um, Deborah Rasili has accepted the position of the community assess coordinator. And she is great. Um, she is keeping up with the MCC, MCC and ICC, whatever that is, and school board meetings up today. And she's got the new our our town's videos for June and the charter update. And um, they 
Dr. Steve is really helping us. He's really great. And um, I'm learning a lot. That's about it. Great. Thank you, Councilor Morton, the museum board. Yes, I've been attending the museum board meetings for the last couple, three months, and um, there's a lot of excitement about the possibility of the museum moving down to the old city hall. There is uh, also an unusual situ situation there, which um, Dennis Everly has pointed out several times, that he's, he was in at the beginning of the museum, and they were begging for um, donations. And is that a sessions? For a session. So now they have so much and so much volume, they are looking at things to de accession. And that is quite a process because you have to get a hold of the original donor and see if they want it back for their family members. And if they are gone, get a hold of the family members or the family members' children or unto the I don't know what number of generations. But it is, um, it is a unique thing that a museum that was started here a number of decades ago is now to the point of having too much stuff. And moving to a larger facility would certainly assist with that. Thank you, appreciate it. Councilor Willis? So um, I shared a little bit last meeting that um, Hoppin Heritage was struggling just a bit with volunteers and, and some sponsors. So we met this last week and um, as a body uh, actually decided to take a one year hiatus. Um, that one of the difficulties we're coming up against is with um, all the events surrounding uh, Indigo Star and the Eclipse that uh, sponsorships are kind of lean. People are seem to be putting their sponsorship dollars towards Indigo Star, which is great news for that event. So we're going to uh, take this year off and then uh, early next year we'll begin regrouping and reformulating. And in the meantime, we're rounding up some willing bodies to come and help us out. So if you know anybody, let us know. I have a question. Will there be an announcement of that sort on Facebook or some other? There way? will. It's, uh, Phil's going to take care of that. He did our website, so there will be announcements on the website and Facebook, all of that. So, and then we're taking care of the, the details. We're uh, refunding a few vendors and yeah. that sort of thing. So. Right. I think it's a smart move, especially in light of all the stuff going on this year. I, I, I think so. And I, th I think uh, with what's going to be coming up in the coming year, I think it, it makes a nice a nice transition. So it does. I really think it makes good. Okay, continuing forward, we have some recognition to do. And uh, we have a resolution on page nine recognizing the outstanding work of Mike Danko. What I like, and uh, Miss Karen, are you uh, hearing this or? Would you like me to read this for the record? Sure. Resolution number 07-1458. Whereas the City Council of the City of Independence from time to time commends various people for outstanding services to the city and Whereas Michael Dako began his service to the city as community development technician in June 1990, and with several promotions, eventually serving as the city's combined public works director and community development director. And whereas Michael Dako has continually worked for the betterment of our community by providing oversight to the creation of master plans, updates to the city's comprehensive plan, the downtown improvement plan, and other projects too numerous to list but which will influence and shape independence for years to come. Now, therefore, it is hereby resolved by the City of Independence as follows. Section 1. Let it be known to all citizens that Michael Dago has done his utmost to serve the City of Independence since June 7, 1990, and has faithfully served its citizens. Section 2. That he has executed the duties and responsibilities of the position with excellence and dedication, and the same is greatly appreciated by the Mayor. City Council, City staff, and the citizens of the community. Done this 27th day of June, 19, sorry, 2017. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd like is, uh, if I could, is I could, if I could get a motion in a second, then I have some comments to make, and I'm sure some other people would like to make some comments in the discussion section uh, before we make a vote, and then I have some things that we'd like to pass on. I move to approve resolution 07 1458. Second. 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 Second
4458 commemorating Michael Mango. Second. And I have a motion and a second. So under discussion, um, I get to say nice things about a man who has made a huge impact on our community. 27 years, come to work every day and help make our community better. I had staff put together a list of some of the things that he did and I get tired. Um, he's done two park and open space master plans. You know, and master plans, as you know, you know, they don't just sit on the shelf here, they actually happen. And that, that really makes a difference in the fact that we've had plans have opened the doors in so many, many ways. There's a stormwater master plan, wastewater master plan, sewer facility master plans, more water master plans, a downtown development plan, uh, an independence bicycle plan, a transportation systems plan, updating the city's comprehensive land use plans numerous times, uh, important updates in the development code. You know, for a number of years, many of you may not remember, there weren't sidewalks along all of Monmouth Street, but because he has a customer service attitude and, worked and got to know people, he made things happen, and it was one of the first things I got to be involved with. We even had a ribbon cutting for some sidewalk, and, uh, and, the, and the little ladies of the senior center did milk and cookies, and he set it up in such a way that when they uh, were over there, and, uh, Barbara Martin, who many of you uh, knew when she was alive, thanked them, and they said, if you could ever do anything else, and she said, could you pay for the other side of the street? <laughs> and Mike made that happen. He made the amphitheater happen, the downtown streetscape, the Veterans Memorial, was involved with the new library. The railroad improvements on 2nd Street, let me tell you that when, that those are huge, and that's about relationships. That's about relationships and good old-fashioned hard work. I know I've got to keep secrets. <laughs> the new city hall it was very much the relocation of the boat ramp, the independent sports park. You know, not to mention all the developers he's worked with, the numerous subdivisions. You know, we're a city of 9,250 now. When Mike first started, we were under 5,000. And 4,025. Uh, Come again? 4,025. 4,025. That's a lot of growth. And so, um, and I want to also say, Mike has been a professional to work with. Uh, his vision and knowing what the right people to bring in to help us move forward. Um, as I wrote in the card, uh, that you'll get later, that um, the kinds of things that you have helped do in with the staff that's here and staff previously and citizens, it's not just something that's a year or two. This is something that's going to be not just my son's generation, not our grand, my grandson's generation, but after that. You've changed the face of our community for the better, and it will be reflected for hundreds and hundreds of years. So from myself, uh, I want to say a huge thank you. I won't do that on um, But uh, those are any comments. And if anybody else would like to add any comments, this would be an appropriate moment. Call for the question and a standing ovation for Mike. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And a So now I get to give out goodies. Come on up, Mike. Mike hates this, by the way. And, and I know he did. He He's here tonight as a personal favor to so many of us. And, and Mike, this is a, we didn't want to get you just a little plaque. And so because of what you, we got a better plaque. It's on stone. And because the things that you've done for us and for this community are going to last a long time, just like this stone. And so if you'll turn that way, we can have a picture. And then, Great. And I have a, we have a, another little bit. I'll, I'll hold that for you. Because I can give it to Karen. <laughs> <laughs> See, I learned this. We have something special in here for you to open. And uh, you can just pull that out. It's safe. Trust me. More It's a little pack. Thank you. There you go. Council has a safe.
Um, I gave you a copy of the letter we received yesterday. We received for the second year in a row now, uh, and the second time ever, our uh, award in financial reporting. And so this is this is the certificate here. And it's quite an honor to have received it. We, uh, the staff has done a lot of work, and I thank them for uh, getting us to this point. So it's it's really exciting to me that um, we've been able to achieve that award. Well, on behalf of the council and the city, I want to congratulate you and all the staff that, that helped her for this with the certificate of achievement for excellence in financial reporting. Thank you. Um, it, it's a wonder. It's a it's a real feather in our community's cap. Uh, for that, and, so, and I know that uh, your leadership has made a huge difference to that. So, uh, uh, appropriate, appropriate hugs and appropriate kisses from a long way. Yeah. I just want to echo. I, I'm extremely proud of our financial department and our just our entire team that was able to make this possible. It, it really is a. It's not a unique offer, you know, not a unique award in the state. There are a number of communities that have it, but it certainly isn't an overwhelming number. Gloria has uh, led a financial team, you know, to really a level of excellence we haven't seen and, and, and reliability in our finances that we haven't seen. So I'm just really proud and, you know, tremendous job, Gloria. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. So uh, I believe we start with the supplemental budget and the, uh, you have my memo on that. Uh, basically the supplemental budget, the, the first uh, resolution there that uh, adopts and appropriates the funds, uh, that That particular one is uh, to increase increase the transfers to our tourism and events fund and move the salaries and benefits for our parks and events coordinator from the administration department of the general fund. So that was a big portion of that. The the other part, the bulk of uh, the supplemental budget is. Uh, to adopt the funds or a portion of the funds from the water uh, revenue bonds and to uh, because we have not appropriated to uh, cover the financing portion the cost of the financing of those uh, the closing costs basically uh, for that uh, for those bonds um, And then also, we had not anticipated having to have uh, debt service on those bonds ahead of uh, the completion of the projects. So you see on the resolution under the water fund there, the debt service for 445,000. Um, that is also a part of it. Uh, when another part of this uh, supplemental budget is when the original budget was adopted the resolution did not appropriate uh, properly some of the expenditures that were you adopted the budget but the resolution didn't um, didn't properly categorize those appropriations so this takes care of that too uh, this was according to our auditors what we needed to do to make it right. So moving it from one fund, move, moving things back and forth to put them in the right place. Right, okay. yes. And this is what we do this every year. Yes. So the supplemental budget, uh, that resolution, and in order to uh, adopt that one, it requires a uh, public hearing, so we need to open a public hearing. And we'll do that. that. Are there questions at the moment for on the supplemental budget on page uh, 35 through 37? Is everybody okay with this? Any questions? 
Okay. Just, I just, Please do. Uh, was curious in the original water fund bond terms, mm -hmm. there was no mention of a uh, debt service payment in this fiscal year. I hadn't anticipated that much of, um, okay. for that. That's so it came in larger than you thought it would be. Right, and in addition, it was kind of a twofold thing. The uh, the not anticipating that guest service and uh, incorrectly appropriating in the original resolution. Okay, I hear no more questions for the council. Is there anybody in the public that wishes to? I will open a public hearing. Does anybody have anything they need to say related to the supplemental budget at this time? I see no one stepping to the uh, podium, and so I'm going to close the public hearing without objection. Uh, anything else anybody needs to, uh, to do related to the supplemental budget? Uh, this is an action item. Uh, I move to approve resolution number 17-1452. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, motion carries. Thank you very much. I move. Excuse me. Okay. I move to uh, approve resolution number 17. Second. I have a motion to second. Is there any other discussion related to this matter? Are we okay? Everybody knows what we're doing? This is a transfer of funds. I mean, transfer between funds. Right. This one is, uh, it doesn't uh, adopt any new spending or appropriate any new spending. It's just taking what uh, uh, what had been budgeted in one category and moving it to another, so. Okay, I have a motion to second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, motion carries, thank you. Okay, okay thank you. So we're on to the regular 2017-18 budget. Please. So I really don't have anything to add to my memo other than uh, to highlight that we did uh, do, the, do those changes that uh, were approved by the budget committee. And so those have been incorporated. Um, you, I know, I realize you didn't have much time with the uh, revised budget book. Uh, in that revised budget book, you'll see where, uh, where I Changed it so we have the supplemental budget in the final budget uh, uh, column, and then the approved budget as approved by the budget committee, and it incorporates those changes. I uh, do have those if um, you want a reminder. As council members, as you recall, we we in the budget committee went through the whole book and spent several days doing that. And so this, and uh, so the TV audience knows that uh, there's been considerable time spent uh, with the uh, Citizen Budget Committee and others. Are there questions uh, for uh, Ms. Butch related to the budget, the document? We all okay? If someone, I, uh, please do. I, I, that I was trying to put pause there because I thought you were. Sorry, I was forming a question. Okay. Uh, I was just thinking, I was uh, at our sister city a week ago tonight, listening to them go through the same thing. And so this is uh, interesting, all the different parts and pieces of the, of the um, things you must pass in order to pass a full budget. I just, I wanted to make a couple of public comments about budget. And um, that is uh, essentially that we, as a city, have not been supporting the Monmouth Independence Chamber of Commerce, and I think that ought to be uh, on a future um, agenda to look at that because that is a joint uh, project between two cities, and that's part of our, our strategic goals is to approve the things that assist in relationship between the cities. And I think it makes a poor statement if we as a city do not support the Chamber of Commerce or the Visitor Center beyond our, our membership. That's my 
opinion. What's your when you what's your definition of support? The several years ago when the visitor center was opened, the cities got together and pledged some annual support for them. It's a 501c6 organization. And it was to uh, jointly be able to have a visitor center that would serve both communities, which otherwise we do not have. And the, is that the one up on 99? On 99. And the um, city of Monmouth still supports that. The city of Independence chose not to. And I, like I said, I think it makes a poor statement when we don't support our own chamber and visitor center. Well, it makes a poor statement when our chamber doesn't have a space in our town? That's been an argument since uh, the beginning of time, and it's been in our town, and it's been in the other town, and this is in both. I can understand it being in both. Let's have this discussion off-site, because I have lots to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be, we can, we can have a further discussion at, a, at, a better t at another time. Yes, um, I just want to get it, wanted to get it on the record that that needs to be discussed again. Okay. okay, so. I think it's a good idea, because, you know, we work together. Okay. So, there, uh, just a reminder that we need to I, I will. So, are there any more questions for staff at the moment? Without hearing any more questions for staff, I'm going to open a public hearing. Does anybody have anything to say about the city budget at this point? I see no one stepping to the uh, podium, so without objection, I'm going to close the uh, uh, public hearing. Now, is there a uh, do, I, do we need to do this in any order? Uh, help walk me through, because I see the, the motions in front of us here, and you just want me to just go uh, go through as listed? Yeah, yes okay. please. On page 42 of 64, you can just list it one way on the agenda, one way here. So, um, and we have uh, a number of different um, uh, uh, resolutions that we need to pass here. So if someone would start us, please. To start. Okay. I move to approve resolution number 17-1457, a resolution adopting the City of Independence budget for fiscal year 2017-18 in the sum of $28,694,715. To approve appropriations in the amount of $28,602,231, to impose the ad valorem property taxes for 2017-18 at the rate of 4.5897 per thousand of assessed value for the permanent rate and in the amount of $423,045 for debt service of the general obligation bonds and to categorize the taxes. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Is there a discussion? I said we've already looked at all this for quite a while. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Motion carries. And so we need to move on to the next one. Okay, uh, I, go ahead. I, I move to approve resolution number 17-1456, a resolution to approve interfunds loans for fiscal year 2017 through 2018. I have a motion. And a second by Tom. Is there further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Motion carries. Let's, somebody else would like to do the next one? I move to approve resolution number 17-1454, a resolution to elect to receive state revenues for fiscal year 2017-18. Second, always my favorite one. Yes. I have a motion and a second. Karen, did I need to have a public hearing on that one? Yes, but I, you did. You I, did, I covered you did them all with the other one. Okay, yes. thank you. It's always amazing that we have to vote to accept. To accept one. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Okay, I think I think we're all in favor of that one. So I, I've had a motion, second, discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Now we will come back to the final one. Here. Is this the uh, urban rural district one? We'll come back to that. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. And we'll. Okay, and so we are on to uh, page 51, workers' compensation coverage. So, if I may interrupt, please. I had another item that I'd like to share with, with council. Go ahead. Uh, we have uh, received a refunding opportunity from uh, the underwriter uh, 
uh, D.A. Davidson uh, to, uh, it's another opportunity, this time it would be to refund the, the rest of the ICC bonds that we had refunded a year ago. And then also a uh, portion of the two 2010s MyNet bonds, uh, uh, both A and B, there's a tax exempt one and uh, taxable bonds. Uh, for the savings on these would be approximately a half million dollars uh, for the life of the bonds. Uh, for not for my net, for my net, that means about two hundred four sixty four thousand uh, savings. Uh, I have uh, tried to contact my net. Uh, their finance person. Uh, there was um, prior we had tried to work on doing a refunding of those MyNet bonds a while back, and there was some due diligence problems that they were having to get through, and so uh, we left that and just did went ahead with the refunding of our um, ICC bonds, and uh, I believe that MyNet has has finished through that due diligence problem that they were having. Uh, I haven't confirmed that for sure. But uh, it would be a great opportunity if they have. And then also, I wanted to let you know that I, the city of Monmouth, their finance director there, without a finance director right now. So I reached out to the city manager there and because they were, uh, given this opportunity to re refund their portion to. And so uh, it sounds like uh, I've offered my assistance in helping them get through the, the preliminary offering statement and all of that. That's really the hard work of it. Great. And so it looks like we can do this in partnership with them. Wonderful, everybody saves money. Yes, yeah. What's the cost up front? The, there is no upfront cost. Uh, the the costs are uh, incorporated into the whole funding. Yes. The principal gets paid. Right. It's, right. it's a success fee. Hmm? It's a success fee, and no fees are due unless the actual bond is is sold. Right. We we don't have any upfront costs at all. Uh, we have bond attorneys, uh, the underwriters, and. <coughs> our uh, financial advisors, but none of them will charge us unless it closes. Except for the rating agency, we will. Yes, the rating agency does charge, but that would be the only cost if, if the only upfront cost or out-of-pocket cost if it didn't uh, refund. So, and those savings that she described to you are net of those costs? Yes. Okay, so we don't have to do anything, we're just being informed. Right, we um, just wanted to kind of get an uh, idea of if you're interested, we'll uh, pursue it further, and then uh, we'll be coming back to you uh, with the resolution to uh, to be able to do And you'll work with John Cooper? Yes. So does anybody have any problem with saving money? No, I just wanted to know how long the, the re refinanced period will be. I do not believe that it will extend the life of the bonds. It's just to refund, refinance them so that it's a lower rate. Okay. So yeah. as far as I know, it doesn't extend the life. That's so if there's, for instance, a, a, a $236,000 savings for the uh, ICC, then, and there's 20 years left, then we'd say one twentieth of that for each year going forward, right? Yeah. more or less. Yes. More or less, yeah. More or less. It's not an even payment. I, I understand right. that. I, I re remember the rule of yes, whatever, it's 64th. Right. Okay. Thank and, you for the, go and, ahead. And I just wanted to say, I think Ken is aware that the, I heard that the Minette finance director was in Hawaii for two weeks. That's why he's not reading. Oh, okay. That's why he didn't answer his phone. Yeah, so I can get a hold of the mail problem. Yeah, we're fine. Right. Right. get him to answer. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet you had to take a road trip to find it, too. <laughs> okay, with that said, um, I'm going to keep us moving forward on to page 51, if that is the next step. I think that
that's the uh, one where we have to approve uh, coverage for uh, workers' compensation coverage that's for. Me. Is that you, Ms. Karen? Oh, that's me. Yep. Johnson, go ahead. Mayor and Councilors, um, first of all, let me apologize for the staff memo not being included in the packet. Um, however, um, this is a very simple resolution. It's it, essentially the exact same resolution as provided last year. We um, provide um, workers' compensation coverage to a certain number of volunteers, and those are listed within the resolution. And it, a resolution is required by our city, county, insurance services in order to provide this coverage. Um, should you decide to not offer coverage to volunteers that is also your your choice but we recommend that these these uh, coverages be uh, provided this year questions for staff here are no questions uh, this is an action item please okay i'll move uh, to uh, through resolution 1714-1455 a resolution extending independence workers compensation coverage volunteers in the city of independence for the coverage year 2017-2018. have a motion. Second. And a second. Is there a discussion? Everybody's okay. All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, any council general announcements? Uh, otherwise, we're going to move into the urban renewal district. Okay. Uh, without objection, uh, I'm, going to read, I'm going to adjourn the city council meeting. Any objection? Okay, now uh, during the council meeting, I now call to order the yeah. urban renewal. Yeah. Yes, sir. Did you, I'm sorry, I may have missed it. Did you ask for council comments? Council comments? Yeah, yeah, I did. My bad. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Were we expected to have some? I didn't anticipate nobody playing me. <laughs> I'm going to kick you to the table. That's right. <laughs> Dinner's waiting. Come on, girl. Um, I now call to order the urban renewal agency. I'll let the record show that uh, all members are present. There are minutes in the packet on, 59, on page 5961 for the uh, June 13th meeting. Do they make, uh, are they okay with everybody? Yes. I, I, I take that as a motion. Is there a second? Second. I have motion, second, all in favor, six, five, say aye. Aye. And opposed, motion carries. Anybody wish to make comments to the Urban Renewal Agency? I see no visitor comments walking up to the agency at this point, so I'm going to move to uh, Ms. Bush, who is going to uh, uh, present the uh, Urban Renewal Agency budget on page 63. Ms. Bush. Thank you. Uh, my memo for the, the city budget pretty much covers uh, the Urban Renewal. The odd thing about the Urban Renewal uh, resolution is that it looks like it has the appearance that it's out of balance. It is not. Uh, what happens here is we are appropriating for the project and uh, the project fund is uh, in a deficit fund balance. So that makes this resolution look um, very odd. And, but, but otherwise- But it is correct. It is correct. Additional questions for our staff members here. Again, this is all part of the, went through the whole budget process. Okay, but since there are no more questions for staff, is there any public comment that anybody wishes to make at this point about the urban renewal budget? Seeing no one stepping to the microphone, I'm gonna close the, the uh, public hearing on the urban renewal uh, budget. This is an action item. Someone, it's, it's on page 42. I move to approve resolution number 2017-01, a resolution adopting the Independence Urban Renewal District budget for fiscal year 2017-18 in the sum of $939,054 to approve appropriations in the amount of $2,660,046 and to declare and certify the maximum tax increment that may be raised. I have a motion. Second. A second. Uh, is there a discussion? New here. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Council members, we have a budget for a city and an urban renewal district. Uh, we've 
we've done what we need to do. Uh, anything else for the Urban Renewal Agency at this point? Okay. Um, if not, someone would care to adjourn us for the evening? Thank you. And remembering that our next meeting will be at 6.30 p.m. So please note that. Just our next meetings will be at 6.30 p.m. And we'll be forward to them. So I have a motion to second all in favor of adjourning say aye. 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 And opposed, motion carries. Thank you very much. Have a pleasant evening and still light.